On the bench today, we have the Marshall Model 1987 50 watt amplifier that I introduced in a video. We're going to be doing some repair and some replacement of some components on this amplifier. Today, we're starting with the power transformer and then we'll move on to the CAN capacitors and some other things that we need to do. I've got the power transformer in. This is the Hammond 290EX. This is a baseman transformer. I mentioned in the previous video how in the Mojo Tone 45 watt chassis, it will not fit a standard Marshall size, uh, standard Marshall size power transformer. It's gonna fit the the baseman. So we're gonna check that today. Hopefully this is a drop-in fit. It might have a little bit more voltage than I would like, but it's got less voltage than the Mojo Tone. JTM 45 transformer. So the question is, why don't I just buy a Mojo Tone transformer if it's going to be a drop in replacement for this? And the answer is number one, there's a shortage of transformers right now, and a lot of manufacturers are not selling spares. Uh, this Hammond one was in stock at a major kind of resupply place, and so I bought that. The second is that the transformer seems to be a little hot that Mojo Tone sells. It's a 700 volt uh, center tapped secondary, while this is a 660. I mentioned before this is a 600 center tapped, so this is a pretty good compromise between the super high voltage on the Mojo Tone 45 and the uh, the low voltage of this one. So just a bit of a size comparison, you can see that this is quite a bit larger than the transformer that it's going to be replacing. And as for another size comparison, here we have the baseman size transformer and he, or the Mojo Tone JTM 45 size transformer. This is an official Marshall transformer. You can see it's longer and wider. Um, so this will not fit in this chassis. Hopefully you can see from this angle what I've done to mount this uh, stand-up transformer in the lay-down chassis. I just got a double gang switch plate from the hardware store and I attached it to the chassis, attached the transformer to this and punched some holes through for the wires. Pretty simple solution, but it's going to be changed out. Okay, I've got the power transformer out, and hopefully you can see just what I did now to mount this in a stand-up configuration in the lay-down chassis. Like I mentioned, this is just a standard kind of plate you'd get off of out of the hardware store as a cover plate for your 2 gig outlet. And I just mounted the transformer to that and dropped it and mounted it right in there. I wanted to do a quick spec comparison between these two transformers. These are made by the same manufacturer, Hammond Manufacturing. Um, I, we mentioned the size difference between these. And as far as the ratings go, I mentioned the voltage. This transformer on the secondary is rated to 275 milliamps, as this one is rated to 150 milliamps. 6.3 on this is 5 amps. 6.4 on this is 4 amps. And it doesn't appear as this one has a 5 volt winding but I'll have to double check that this one does have a 5 volt winding but apparently I've tucked it up inside I'll have to look at that but for the build I have this planned for I'm not worried about it in the past I've kind of been a little frustrated with Hammond because they produced all their transformers with 115 volt primaries which means by the time you apply the modern 123 volts AC to your primary side your secondary side is going to be reading a lot higher. In this case, since this is a low voltage uh, secondary, it bumps it up a little bit more, but unfortunately your 6.3 volt ends up being somewhere in the seven point something range. So in the past, I've encouraged people not to get these HEMA transformers. Now they are including a 120 volt tap, and uh, especially for the guitar series transformers. So I would, this is my first build using one of the new Hammonds, and I hope it turns out well. Here you can see the Hammond 290EX 
Bass Man Transformer installed in the Marshall or the Mojo Tone JTM44 chassis, and it's a drop in fit. So, if you're looking for a replacement, you don't like the Mojo Tone voltage, or you want to get something different, then grab a Bass Man Transformer, it's going to fit. Now that I know the transformer is going to be a drop in fit, I'm going to do an assessment of the inside of the amplifier. And looking initially at this, the wiring looks pretty good at that right in here. There's not excessive length, um, nice tight groups of wire. One thing you'll notice is I've got my Larmar or Rich Mod type master volume, and I've got the control over here on the low input of the base or the normal channel. I mentioned before about this uh, kind of incognito knob that I found that looks a lot like one of the inputs. And if I can find the part number to that, I'll post it in the description. You'll notice that I've got some black tape over here. This is actually the original low input. I didn't want to cut any wiring, so I just pulled it out wrap some tape around it, and then I wrap some tape around the pot to insulate it from any extra wiring. So if we're getting any signal leakage, it's likely in this area. So we'll likely be putting some shielded wire in this area to compensate for that. And hopefully that will correct the kind of uh, the, the parasitic oscillations that I'm getting in the amplifier. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is to pull the caps out and replace those, get them wired in, and then we'll go and work on the rest of the internal wiring. Okay, I've had to do a little bit of disassembly as I'm trying to get these capacitors out of here. The first one's not too bad. It's right in the corner. There's a little bit of wiring behind it. That's not too bad. But these, I believe that I actually had to cut one of the holes in this chassis. To mount this and these go right underneath the board so I had to take the turret board and remove it but one thing I found was that the wires here were a little tight and so I'm gonna be lifting up the front of the board there's not a lot of play in the wiring back here so I'm gonna be lifting up the front of the board pulling these components out of the way doing the soldering with these components up and out of the way now, one thing I thought I'd mention was I've been trying to figure out what to do with this master volume. The original master volume was installed here on the low input of the normal channel. I think I'm going to just go ahead and drill another hole back here and put it in the back panel. It might not be as easily accessible, but hopefully it will stop some of the signal leakage that may be happening between the inputs and this high-level signal that's coming off of the master volume. Okay, I've finished a little bit of work on the Marshall. I want to talk about what I've done. I cleaned up my bench a little bit because it looked terrible after some of the work that I was doing and some other projects I kind of got started. But here's what we've done so far. First, I've got the input jacks back in the front, all of the wiring back in the front, the turret board is mounted. I've replaced the capacitors with Adam Sprague capacitors. Um, I've got the power transformer in. And I've got a couple of grounds here. I'm gonna go with the star ground because my wiring is not as big as I'd like it to be, but it's larger than what was in there. I think I've got some 18 gauge wiring where I had 22 before. And my 22 gauge grounds were run in serial. So everything kind of went in here and then into the, the power transformer. I wanna change that. So I've got all the grounds running of this and here I have these I think I picked these up at Antique Electronics or Amplified Parts or those are the kind of commercial retail places. They've got these washers, ground washers that will go on a, a number eight uh, screw. And so I've, I've used these, I got one over here. Some of these little crimp connectors I have didn't crimp very good with my cheap tool that I had. And so I've pulled those off and I've got some better grounds here. All of the uh, preamp wiring is grounded here. I've got a bias point ground here. And then all of the power amp wiring, including the capacitors for the power amp section, 
are going to be grounded here. So that's kind of the answer to the grounding. We go for a star ground on the power amp so that each path doesn't induce. If you have a lot of current running through a, a small wire diameter, what you end up is a voltage induced across that wire, which can then couple into sensitive areas and cause hum. So I'm going to try to avoid that as much as possible. Now, I, I did uh, change out the uh, filter capacitors. It appears that I had some 32s in the preamp. Yeah, I've got two 32s, two 32 by 32 and a 50. I've gone straight to all 50s for this repair. And hopefully that will kind of uh, fill some of the mush that I was having. That might solve that kind of problem. Um, I've, I've kind of got the wiring where it needs to be. Um, here I've got my heater. They're going to come and attach down here. I've got my high voltage AC, which is going to attack, attach up here to the rectifier. Um, my primaries and stuff are going to go in. So I got a little bit of wiring here to do with the power transformers. Um, I talked about putting shielded wire in and I can't really find a great place to do that. I did, I did move the master volume over to the back. I drilled this new hole here, made sure it was spaced just like this. Um, yeah, so I had to, drill a new hole here which was kind of challenging being the faceplate and the uh was already on here so i found a way to catch all the material on the inside so i didn't and um also worked very carefully and pulled all of the the pieces of metal that were left over all the chips kind of pulled them out of this vacuumed it out before i put it back together so that actually turned out really well it didn't make a mess inside the amplifier at all and reading on some of the, the MetroAmp forum where it mentions this wiring, one of the things it says is don't stick it right there. It will cause a lot of noise. So hopefully this being isolated from the main portion of the circuit with the shielded wiring, this is going to be uh, working a lot better. And if it put it back together and it works great, I likely won't need shielded wiring. And the, the recommendation, if you put in a master volume and you still have problems, is to shield the output of the phase inverter going to the uh, power tubes. So other than that, the shielded wiring up front is kind of hard because you've got the jacks running to your mixer resistors or your voltage divider resistors, whatever you're going to call them, on your inputs. And this goes to these two individual and then back through here. So... Having this the resistors here on a Marshall is kind of problematic because you're you can induce voltages in here. On a Vox, you've got your resistors here, so you can run shielded wire from there to your sockets. But the traditional Marshall doesn't quite work out to that. Now these are the old capacitors that I used. These are BC components. I'm not sure what the model number is, and I'm not sure if it comes through on the video. But these are this cool light blue kind of steel blue color with a nice blue candy stripe i've i've really these are really cool i like them i like the look of them i wish i could find some more like that but i couldn't find them for this um also it looks really cool to have your resistor mounted directly on your capacitor instead of just being paralleled up but when you go to remove your capacitor it's really hard to get this resistor off so luckily I had another resistor in my stash. When I order parts, I try to order an extra one or two of each part so I have spares on hand. And luckily I had another, uh, I believe that's an 820 ohm resistor so that I could tag it on to this capacitor. So now this repair is looking really good. Um, and I think that's about all to mention right now. It's just a matter of wiring up the last things and then firing it up and testing and see if it's going to work okay i've got the marshall all rewired power transformers in every connection that we've i've broken i think i've reconnected but just to make sure i got a copy of my schematic i'm going to go through and take like the capacitors that i changed out and i'm going to just verify again with my multimeter that each of these are connected the way they should be before I put in the tubes and fire it up. 
Okay, I moved the uh, 50 watt Marshall off of the bench. I went and double checked all the connections on the schematic. And every time I uh, check from one point to another with the ohm meter, I put a highlighter across that to know that I've checked it. Sometimes I'll go through and double check it. Because this was just a kind of a, a small rewiring, I didn't worry too much about double or triple checking it. Um, it, it looked, there wasn't any disconnected wires from what I had before, so everything was looking good. So I've got it here. I've got it uh, mains on, the standby on, or the standby is off at the moment. And what I have done is I connected it up to the light bulb limiter, turned it on, and everything looks fine. There's no electrical shorts in here. So the wiring is all looking pretty good. And now we're just going to test to see how it does in a zero signal condition. So I've got all of the volumes cranked up all the way. I cranked them all the way down, including the master volume in the back. And there's just a little bit of like kind of transformer hum. Um, not quite as bad as it was before. So that's a little bit better. But now I'm going to go ahead and flip the standby on and we're going to do a little bit of testing. Or is it off standby? Standby on, off standby? I don't know, you got standby on? I don't know. All right, so you can tell there's a little bit of uh, hiss in here. And as I go and I raise the master volume more, So we've got that wine is still in here. So this is still has some parasitic oscillation. So at this point, I think based off of feedback that I've read online, that the best uh, action to take on this would be to take the output of the phase inverter to the power input of the power tubes and to shield those connections, especially with the extra wiring there with the master volume and uh, also my external bias pot. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take a little, really quick measurement of plate voltage and um, plate voltage and also uh, bias voltage. See what I'm getting at zero signal here. But one other thing that I noticed is that now I've seen this problem before, where it seems like a tube is microphonic, and sometimes you've got a bad solder joint in your uh, on your tube socket so sometimes even a component can seem microphonic and there's a bad solder joint there so I'm going to double check all my solder joints retouch those on V1 to make sure that it, it, it's kind of strange that every tube that's been in that position has been microphonic so I'm going to go let's, let's check these ones out yeah those are fine but that may just be a, a a little bit of a bad solder joint on the V1. Okay, I'll do a quick check on the plate voltage. Um, I think the original was about 420 with the original power transformer. If I just touch the chassis here, I should get a measurement of plate voltage. All right, we're looking at about 445. So this is quite a bit higher. That might help for a little bit cleaner headroom. Now I've got the uh, I've got this plugged into the bias points in the back. I'm just going to go ahead and turn these down so I can get a true zero signal condition. But it looks like we're getting 61 milliamps through that one ohm resistor at about 450 volts. That's about 27 watts. So obviously this needs to dial, get be dialed down. So I'm going to turn this off standby and see if I can get it down to about uh, 17 watts dissipation. Okay, I made an adjustment on the bias pot, and now I am at right at 37, um, what was it, 37.9. It's going up a little bit, it's drifting a little bit. But uh, 37.7 gives me right at where I want to be at 70% dissipation at zero signal. So this is in the right range, it's got set up right. And one more thing that I did was, uh -huh. I moved the V1 into V3 position. I mentioned that it might have a microphonic socket, but 